to the chairman's opening question, um, Mr. Bernanke, about auditing the, the Fed. Uh, none of us are challenging, or I'm not challenging, the transparency that, that you've given to uh, us and seeing what is happening. But moving forward to the future, not the past, uh, the ranking member's uh, opening comments about playing politics. Um, most of, uh, I know the freshman class, we're not here to play politics. This is about trying to prevent or hopefully build a better America than we have now. Uh, and auditing the Fed to most of the American people seems like something that's responsible if the political games wouldn't uh, be played. Can you just kind of comment, I mean, are you that opposed to auditing the Fed? Yeah, very much so, because I think the term audit the Fed is deceptive. The public thinks that auditing means checking the books, looking at the financial statements, making sure that, uh, you know, you're not doing special <clears throat> deals and that kind of thing. All of those things are completely open. The GAO has complete ability to address all the things we did during the crisis. All of our books are audited by by uh, an outside private uh, Deloitte and Touche, a private auditor. Out, um, uh, we have an inspector general. Um, if there's anything that Congress uh, wants to know about our financial uh, operations, um, all they have to do is, is say so. Um, the one thing which I consider to be absolutely critical, though, about the bill and is – is that it would eliminate the exemption for monetary policy in deliberations. And the nightmare scenario I have is one in which some future Fed chairman would decide, say, to raise the federal funds rate by 25 basis points, and somebody in this room would say, I don't like that decision. I want the GAO to go in and get all the records, get all the transcripts, get all the pre preparatory materials, and give us an independent opinion on whether or not that was the right decision. And I think that would have a chilling effect and would prevent the Fed from operating on the apolitical, independent basis that is so important and which experience shows is much more likely to lead to a low inflation, uh, healthy currency kind of economy. Is there anything that could be done, any kind of compromise, in your opinion, that needs to be done any more than is being done now? I think everything in the bill is basically fine except for getting rid of, you know, for getting rid of this exemption for monetary policy, deliberations, and operations. I mean, I think that's, that's the part that, that is critical, and it's nothing to do with our books. That's, that's the thing I hope to convey. Okay. Uh, second question. Since the financial crisis of 2008, the Federal Reserve has put into place several measures to help stimulate an economic recovery like quantitative easing, operation twist, et cetera. Do you see these measures as temporary solutions to stimulating the economy, or would the Federal Reserve continue these measures on a more permanent basis? I just... Some of us fear that we're just dumping tons of money into the economy and that sooner or later with the low interest rates that, that things are really going to spin out of control when we do have a recovery. So they're, of course, temporary. Um, the economy grows in the long run because of all kinds of fundamental factors, the skills of the workforce, the quality of the infrastructure, the, how effective the tax system is, research and development, all of those things. Monetary policy can't do much about longer-term right. growth. All we can try to do is try to smooth out periods where the economy is depressed because of lack of demand. And because of the financial crisis, the economy has been slow to reach back to its potential, and we're trying to provide additional support so that recovery can bring the economy back to its potential. But in the medium and long term, monetary policy can't do anything to make the economy healthier uh, or uh, grow faster except to keep inflation low, which we're committed to doing. Uh, Things like education, infrastructure, R&D, tax code, all those things obviously are the private sector and Congress, not the Federal Reserve. Do you, do you fear, uh, last question, that, that when the economy starts to turn uh, and move, that it's going to move? It's when we, hopefully, when Washington can add certainty and stability and give confidence back to the American people that we're not going to mess things up. Uh, there's so much money out there that this thing is going to really go, and inflation is going to be a huge problem. No, it will not. We, we know uh, how to reverse what we did. We know how to take the money out of the system. We know how to raise interest rates. So it will be a similar uh, pattern to what we've seen in, in previous episodes where the Fed cut rates, provided support for the recovery, and then when the economy reached a point of takeoff where it could support itself on its own, then the Fed pulled back, took away the punch bowl, and we can do that, uh, and we will do that.